Today's video is sponsored by Boksu. Japanese snacks delivered from Japan straight to your door. Hey Greens and welcome to another episode of I'm Curious. Today we're going to be going completely out of my comfort zone. Though my sister does host with me, she has absolutely wonderful sense of hair, fashion, and just not to mention she's absolutely adorable. You suck. So don't think you're cute! <laughs> Excuse me, can I speak to your manager? Oh. What? I, on the other hand, have no idea what to do with my face nor my fingers. And so today, I really wanted to use the Hollow Taco by Simply Nail Logical in order to give myself extreme nail art makeover. There is no middle. I'm not just gonna paint my nails. I'm not just gonna do hydro dipping. We're gonna go big or go home. So when we talk about nail art designs, sometimes there's these absolutely ridiculous ones that have environments on top of it. So I think I'm the right person to do this because I have sculpting skills. Yeah, join me because I have no idea if I'm gonna fail or succeed. We're in this together. So essentially the big question is, can someone who's never done nail art before, other than dabbling with Crayola nail polish craft kits, that doesn't count. That's me testing craft kits. This is me trying nail art. Can someone like me do it? By the way, for those of you new to this channel, don't forget to click on subscribe and all notifications while you're there because if you don't, I will wave this sharp pointy thing at you. For new people, it might seem scary, but everyone else here seems to like it, so. Now since I have no idea what it takes in order to do nail art and I myself have pretty inexistent nails I went ahead and bought everything including some fake medium-sized nails. I probably should have gotten the bigger ones It's okay. I'll figure it out this thing here Which is an easy pale barrier. I think it's that thing you put around your nails and then so you can paint and the nail polish doesn't get on your skin. That's what Amazon told me to get. Some nail peel stickers. I think these are pretty much just double-sided tape. Oh, that is heavy. Oh, that's two of them. No, that's one. Oh, that is heavy. Good for you. You're quite substantial. In case the stickers don't work, I also have nail glue. I don't want these to be permanent, but that'll teach me to not do enough research. I just bought things. If I'm gonna mess up my own nails, that is my own fault. Don't ask me why, but I also have miniature grass. I'm gonna use some of the grass, because why not? I don't know what I'm doing with my life. Nail art with grass. Of course. Of course, only you would do something like that. I'm really excited to see the Holo Taco, Hol Holo Taco holographic rainbow nail polish. That was a mouthful. For those of you who don't know, Simply Nail Logical is a huge creator here on YouTube, and she has her own line of nail polish. And I have tried one in a previous video where I made a sculpture out of it, and it is pretty good quality. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it down below. I made a pretty cool T-Rex. So when she released this, I was like, rainbows? I love rainbows even though my heart is dark in my soul. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm a walking contradiction. Don't ask questions. So here we go and... Ooh, oh wow, okay. Er me good. These are absolutely beautiful deep colors. I was worried they would be closer to the pastel, but they really have a, I, I guess, dust pastel? They're deep, they're very saturated colors. And as usual, the packaging is really pretty. At the top it says, don't lick the rainbow. Don't tell me what to do, I wanna lick it. I'll lick it, but I didn't, I don't wanna lick it. Not, 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 not these times. <laughs> So we have everything from red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and I guess the other one is a magenta, but I guess we'll find out soon enough. The top of the box clearly says linear holographic nail polish. I'm not quite sure what linear nail polish is. I'm going to guess it's not a circle and it's not a square. So is it tinsel glitter? I don't know. The packaging itself is absolutely adorable. It's very consistent with her previous packages. As we can see, it's holographic. And it has nice shiny black designs on a matte type design. It is vegan, cruelty free, and made in North America. And let's hope I don't ruin the box. Oh, that is a lot less hollow than I expected. Very, very micro hollow. 
just as a comparison, I do have the other collection, where this is obviously way bigger holographic pieces. What's this one? Called Scattered Hollow Taco. And this here is the much tinier grains. This one is called Linear. That's where Linear comes from. So essentially you're getting this kind of holographic effect with the colors. Because I don't know anything else about nail polish, I'm going to do what I normally do as a crafter and artist. Let's go ahead and swatch each one on my fake nails. Am I gonna regret it? I have no idea, but let's do it anyway. We'll do it on my real nails too. Now there's seven colors right here. The biggest issue is I have only five fingers, because I only want to try it on one hand since the other hand is going to be the artwork. So some nails will get too colors. That's just the way it's gonna go. So you're, you're gonna go over here. There. And I think the first thing in order to do this right is I have to put a second skin so I don't get the nail polish on my actual skin. What's that? So it seems to come with vampire hunting weapons. So I have two stakes, to, you know, to get rid of vampires because you have to put a stake through their heart, right? And I'm not sure what this is. We'll find out. Advertisement and leave us a good review. And instructions. So according to the instructions, this is to help me remove this thing. All right, time to see what it looks like. I did give it a good shake and Oh, so if I'm not mistaken, this here is supposed to act like masking fluid when we do, uh, what's it called, uh, watercolor, and you don't want the watercolor to go on another illustration, you, you should put masking fluid, and then you can peel it right off, but instead, it's for your nails. Cool. See, nail art and art, same thing. I am aware the quality of my nails is not pristine, but that's because I've never done anything with them, so be patient with me while I learn this. So it says to start from the middle and do a thick all the way around, like so. That was easy. And we're gonna try the other side, like so. They did say put it thick, so I'm just following instructions. There, that was easy. What was I scared about? Should I do the front too? Ah, why the heck not? Let's encase this sucker. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm sure many of you are cringing right now. There. It's like my nail is wearing a hoodie. Second nail is done. And all five fingers are done. I do admit, I do feel kind of invincible now that these things are around my nails. It almost feels like messing up is less like- I didn't say impossible, just less likely. I have no idea if I'm supposed to push cuticles. I'm not even sure what cuticles are. Y yes, that's how basic I- Forgive me, I know nothing. Help educate me. So let's go ahead and start with the magenta, which is the, ah, no, what happened? <gasps> okay, okay, gentle, gent, gentle, don't touch each other. Okay, they can't, stop it. Oh my God, not, okay, my fingers can't touch each other. That's good to know, very good to know. Oh my God. Now I know why people with nails are like, okay, I will open this like so. Oh my God. Oh no, oh no, <laughs> come on. There we go, I got it. I don't need nobody, I could do it. And here is the magenta, absolutely beautiful. Ooh, that, that smells quite the nail polish, of course. All right, so here we go, the professionally put on nail polish. Oh, oh, ooh, I think we're going to need two coats. Oh, gross, what did I do? We have to be gentle. <gasps> You know what? I'm just gonna let it dry and we'll, we'll see where this goes. So far, so good. <laughs> That's what I tell myself. Stop it! Okay, I don't know. Stop, please. That's what I'm telling myself. It looks good so far. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I need a second coat, but I do know that I'm supposed to remove this before the nail polish fully dries. So I'm going to do that. Um, am I supposed to even touch it? I don't, I don't know. Oh. Am I supposed to go in manually? Oh, oh. And I still managed to mess it up. It's okay, we can only get better. Now in order to see the holographic effect, it does say that it's under a kind of flashlight in order to highlight them. So if I put my, my phone light right on top, we can see that it is highlighted. It's very subtle, but it's there. Why is there construction in front of my craft room at the end of the day? And 
And so as I started putting the nail polish, I have to admit, I can see that I'm pretty goopy and droopy. I'm probably putting too much. But as I got to the blue, by the way, let's admire how beautiful that purple is. And the blue is pretty pretty too. I think I got the hang of wiping the brush properly on the bottle. And each of these only took one coat and I can't see my nails, which I guess is a good thing. As I mentioned, there are seven colors, but I only have five fingers. So the yellow and green went together and then the red and orange. All right, before we continue with what I absolutely know I did wrong, or at least I think so, here's some smexy peel shots. <laughs> I know I'm doing this wrong, so for those of you who want to say, But Janky, you're doing it wrong. You don't even know the first thing about it. I know. That's why today's episode is known to be as, Is it possible for a noob like me to make epic nail art? Don't underestimate me. Just yet. But I definitely know I'm doing something wrong because the nail polish is going into these weird crevices on my finger. I don't even know if it's even supposed to go there. And obviously it's sloppy work. I'm guessing the idea of pushing a cuticle might have made this a cleaner work, but I don't know. I don't know. So it is definitely no fault at all of the actual nail polish. It's the user. And again, I'm shining my flashlight. You could see the amount of hollow that you're getting into each one. Still very subtle, but it's there. Also, let's... let's Give me just a little bit. Remember, I'm trying to look through a camera lens and I'm also painting my nails with my left hand. So not too bad, not too bad. So I have to say it's kind of cute. When you look from far, it doesn't look as bad as when you bring it up close. That's kind of like my face. I mean, get I almost forgot something. Okay, so Simply Nail Logical also uses a top coat in order to make things more glossy. So we're going to be using one layer of taco, as she says. Glossy taco by Hollow Taco. And then add a nice thick coat of glossy taco to seal it all in. We want a nice thick coat of glossy taco. Are you supposed to shake this? I don't know. All right, I definitely wiped it down quite a bit and oh, 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 hello. So as you can see now, the before and after for the green yellow mixture and the plain blue one. I really think they do level up the look a lot more, even though mine still looks like it's made by a three-year-old. Yeah, definitely a nice top coat is, is something I would recommend. All right, let's start with something easy. A good few years ago, I did an environment of a sea turtle on a beach. So let's go ahead and try and create English. So let's go ahead and try and recreate a sea turtle on a beach on a nail. But before doing that, I am easily distracted and I can't get this out of my head. So I'm gonna clean this up. I don't even know when I bought this. This is probably at least five years old. How much do I need? One eternity later. Oh, this is gonna take a while. At least it's working. <laughs> and so the first thing I did was the cute little turtle. Don't be fooled, it looks like it was pretty easy, but no. Many turtles were sacrificed. <laughs> I think it's pretty cute that I want to do resin on nail art, but I have no idea if that's even going to work. <laughs> Where'd I put it? Oh, there it is. You saw that? So I think it's going to be really important for us to test out resin on one of these nails and see whether or not it's going to melt, if it's going to burn, if it's just going to peel off. Do I need to sand the surface? These are all questions I don't know. I mean, the surface here is really slick and smooth, so we might mess up. So let's do a test. For those of you who don't know, resin is a liquid that when hardened turns into a glassy type plastic and it does heat up significantly. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take purple, put a little smidgen right here like so and we're going to use this light to harden it up so far so good a few moments later and touch test okay so it has hardened now peel test oh it is on there oh that is great we have our answer I'm legitimately nervous for this part because now I have to choose one of these stickers so that I can glue this nail on my finger. I really hope that this is going to work because if not, then I'm gonna have to use real, the real glue. How, do, how does this work? Okay, so like this and then this. 
Okay, so it seems like a cushiony gel. Interesting. Am I supposed to move it? Mm. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Probably should have watched tutorial videos, but no. Okay, so let's put it here. I'll push it down. Oh, it may have been too big. How does this work? So I think this is the glue. <laughs> Again, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. It's okay, we'll be brave. We'll be brave. And put this right on top. It feels pretty solid. I think it feels pretty solid. Is this clay in my finger? Yeah, that, that's clay in my finger. I have to admit, it does feel pretty snug. Is it snug? I don't know. Let's file it. I, I don't know. Oh, not bad. So now we're going to build our ocean base. I'm going to take some glitter, mix it up with some UV resin, mix them together until they're a kind of paste. Then I'm going to put a thin layer on the nail. Because we all know if you want a really pretty beach, it has to be sparkly blue. I don't even know how much I'm going to put. How much? Oh, 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 be gentle, be gentle. How much am I supposed to build this up? I think I'm going to do half so that the sand can be on the other half. Oh, that is pretty. That is very pretty. You are pretty. You are pretty. And time to shine the light. This is both exciting and, and interesting and scary at the same time. If this works, I would be more than happy to do more. So make sure you leave a thumbs up if you like the designs at the end. I can definitely come up with way crazier and interesting things. All right, so let's just build it up a little more. Remember, don't get resin on your skin. You don't want that. You do not want that. <laughs> so far, so good. Now we're going to do the exact same thing, except with sand. And I got this sand from the local park a long time ago. It is my tax money dang nabbit. By the way, I have no idea if I put this nail too far up or if it's okay. It, it feels okay to me. So please educate me. I obviously have a lot of work to do. So similarly to the glitter, I mixed the sand with the resin and just started building up the back part so we have a kind of hill looking area. I don't know if this next part is going to work, but the sand here is a little too wet for me. So I'm going to try and use some of the nail glue right on top and then sprinkle some sand on top, hopefully so that it doesn't look wet. Is it gonna work? No glue. Please don't stick on my skin and please don't be extra liquidy. Oh, oh, that is quite liquidy. That is very liquidy. Let's sprinkle some sand. <laughs> I'm a professional. Did it work? I think so. I think so. I just have to clean up. <laughs> now that all the corners are done, let's see if we could just remove the extra sand. Oh, this one got very dark. Not bad. <laughs> And now in order to glue on the turtle, I really want to make sure that our turtle stays on there. So we're not taking any chances. We're going with resin, baby. You grains are my babies. Oh, there it is. Oh. There's an epic thunderstorm going on, so if I lose any power, you grains know what happened. All right, so the idea is to glue the turtle at the bottom because I don't want to get the sand wet. We're just gonna do this here. Now we're gently going to add our turtle. Come on, turtle. Gentle, gentle, right there. Oh, that is cute. Where's my light, Aziz? I'm just a sea turtle. I'm just a sea turtle. Any details on the sea turtle? Mm -mm. Too much here. I mean, what's the point of having a cute sea turtle if it's not going to have tiny details? That is just really tiny. Dang it, and the paint dried. Why are tiny details so hard? Cute. And now in order to make it so that the ocean seems like there's a deeper end, I went ahead and put a little bit of the Holo Taco Dark Blue, which is called Blue Freezy, right on the tip, kind of like a French tip, I think it's called. And then I took a glossy top coat, put it both on the turtle and the ocean. And of course we need a starfish. So here's my first ever nail design. I have to admit, it's it went way better than I expected. Definitely not as amazingly as I thought it would be, because I mean, there's lumps and bumps and, and all that stuff. But I'm pretty sure with a little practice, I can make this even more refined. The fact that I have sculpting skills means that I can bring the level of art, nail art stuff from here to here, because 
Not many nail artists can sculpt. Mini at that. For the second design, I still want to go with the theme of aquatic and also something that got my channel popular many, many moons ago. Yep, I'm gonna try a koi pond. I don't know how that's gonna go, but we're gonna try anyways. I learned my lesson, so I'm going to file this while it's off of my finger. Very gentle, doesn't need much. Pretty good. Oh my god, stay, 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 stay. And now for another moment of truth for the hollow taco. We're going to put it directly on the acrylic nails. I think the only difference is that the previous one, we put it on our real nails and then we put it on the resin. So now it's going directly on the plastic. And, ooh, oh, that is pretty. Oh my God, gooey, 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 too much. <laughs> Interestingly, the hollow and little tiny rainbow effects really do show on the plastic nail more so than my real nail. Now for one of the weirdest items, not like the others weren't weird, grass. What I want to do with this is I want it to go around the edge over here, kind of like, I guess, I don't know if they're called French tips. I keep calling them French tips. Are they, you know, the, just the, the edge of the nail? What are these called? They are called French tips. But first, let us feel the grasses. This is the first time I'm going to touch this. Ooh, fuzzy. Oh, it really does feel like, feel like felt. English, cooperate. It does have this really cool felt texture to it. I'm pretty sure right now, by the sound of it, you all know how it feels with your tongue. Ugh, I don't know why I had to say that. I just. So I took another nail, I measured it, and pretty much tried to keep the same contour so that we can glue it. I only have two fingers that have nails on them, but I can tell you right away, I am not enjoying this one bit as a crafter. I keep knocking my nails all over the place. Everything keeps hitting everything. I don't wanna hold it this way because I don't have that much dexterity. So for those of you who do any kind of art, how do you do it with nails, please? I have no idea how this is done, and I feel like doing a crafting video with nails would be both exciting and infuriating. If you want me to do that, make sure you leave a like. If I reach 30,000 likes, I'll do that. I need more precision. Even closing the camera is a pain in the butt. Oh my god, why is there a bubble? Okay, let's start with this here. Okay. Oh my god. There. I feel like if there was a way to have... Oh no, 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 I didn't want it on the nail. Oh well, there. I feel like if there's a way to do it on some kind of mannequin and then just pluck it out and then put it just straight on your finger, that would be ideal, but doing it on yourself is holy moly quite the endeavor. What are you doing, little fly? Let's let's rewind and slow-mo. Quite the endeavor. Quite the endeavor. If I didn't know better, this little fly probably would have gotten stuck in the glue and then I would have had an extra piece of in my environment. I wouldn't have removed it because it would have been too late anyways. I'm not sure if nail glue works the same way as any kind of glue where I could just put it down like so, dunk things in it and then put it on the surface. I'm not sure, but I'm very tempted to try because we're going to be gluing rocks all the way around. So wish me luck on that. All right, so I am picking up rocks with a tweezer. Oh, schnitz. Well, there goes one rock. There's another rock, putting it into the glue and then on to the surface. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, let's just pretend I do. Let's hope it works. Does it work? <gasps> it worked. No, maybe we just have to leave it longer. Let's go ahead and do that. Oh no, oh no. Oh no, don't get stuck on the tweezers. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Don't get stuck on the tweezers, no, no. Aw, oh, dang it. No, 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 aw, oh, dang it. So, um, mm, that did not work out as planned. I ended up having to remove the other rocks and I think what I'm going to do is the same way I made that cute little pasty of the glitter with resin. I'm going to lay down a layer of that first so that we have our water base inside. And then I'm going to place the rocks with resin. It's going to take longer because I have to harden each one at a time, but I think it's better than trying to wing it with the glue. And now I'm just going to add a 
tiny bit of height where it might be low kind of like over here so far so good as you can see the rocks are nicely placed all the way around for our little koi I don't know what's considered avant-garde and what's considered ridiculous when it comes to nail art I'm just treating it like an environment as a sculptor speaking of sculpting as I said it would be very unpleasant to sculpt with these nails but I do have this really tiny mold of koi fish so I'm going to go ahead and put some resin inside harden it and that's going to be our little koi that's going to go inside all right time to unmold it it is absolutely tiny do not break do not break Gosh, my fingers. come on ermy good it's so cute now the question is does it fit that's what he said and the answer is <gasps> come on come on yes all right, I'm gonna put one more layer of resin, harden it, and I think we're pretty good. Voila, our little koi pond nail. It's cute, it's very simplistic. I feel like the turtle was more difficult, but that little fuzzy part with the grass is really fun to play around with. So if you like to fidget with your nails, you're probably going to play a lot with that little tip of grass that you see right there. It's, it's very pleasant, I really like that texture. I want to do one last one, but this one is going to be absolutely absurd. I mean, ridiculous. Ridiculous. Nobody would wear nails like this, so I feel like it's only appropriate to end on a big bang. And for the last one, I'm definitely going to be needing my thumb because I need the most space possible because I'm going to be building an aquarium with a shaker charm, which means the items on the inside of the aquarium are gonna move. So this little uh, bubble tank is gonna go right on my thumb. Don't ask questions. Just, just follow. So similarly like the other ones, I added my glue and then my fake nail. And now we're going to do the Simply Nailogical Hollow Taco Blue Freezy. That's going to be our base. I really wish we got some kind of white so that I can make the colors a little lighter. But alas, I don't own any other colors but these ones. So we're just gonna have to focus on darker colors to match my soul. <laughs> <laughs> we want a nice thick coat glassy taco now that we have our little aquarium what we're going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of those cute little beads the colored the gold ones with a little resin add them to the bottom and then harden them unfortunately oh look at the nail unfortunately these ones are stuck at the rim on the inside so there's no way for me to get them so we're just going to have to accept that they're there and hopefully just be hidden Similarly to the koi fish, there's no way I'm going to be able to sculpt since sculpting is usually a two-handed job. That's what she said. I can't sculpt with these. Especially not at this, th this, oh my god, uh, this, <laughs> this size over here. It's a really tiny hole. Get your minds out of the gutter. So I'm going to opt for using this mold again, well, this type of mold, while using gummy resin. Similarly to resin, gummy resin, resin. The biggest difference between resin and gummy resin is that this is pretty squishy and flexible. So hopefully we can squeeze it enough to make it through the hole. And time to unmold. Let's start with our little octopus. Oh my gosh, it's so hard. It is really cute. And is it squishy? Yes. It's going to go in no problem. And our little fish. Perfect. Look at that. Squishy. Now I'm just going to take my acrylic paint, put on a little bit of color so that they can pop, and then put a small layer of the gummy resin to seal in the paint. No. No. No, 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 no. I'm telling you, this is way harder than I expect because I can't hold anything and I'm ambidextrous. And sculpting has always been with two hands. Hopefully I can save it. Otherwise it's going to have some really big eyes. All right, this is the moment of truth. Let's go, little little octopus. You can make it. You can make it. Let's go. Don't you dare! Why? <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Oh my god! I am so not working. I am not used to working with my right hand. So this is. Come on, go, buddy. <gasps> yes. There we go. Success. And I'm pretty sure the fish should be easier. Voila. I promise I feel like sculpting and doing nails at this point is made harder by wanting to bypass the fact that I have nails. So making nails while you have nails is challenging in itself. 
So now I'm taking something called shaker oil, which we use in crafting in order to make cute little charms that shake on the inside. Oh, it has a nozzle. Look at that. I did not know. And I'm going to squeeze the oil on the inside just enough so that they start floating. Let's go, buddy. Oh, no, don't tell me it's blocked. Yes, it is. All right. Just can't drop it. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. That would be a mess. Oh no, 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 not on my nails. Oh, now I know how, why people start freaking out. <clears throat> okay, hang on, hang on. Don't, don't fall, don't fall. This is very delicate. And all I need to do is put resin. I'm gonna start putting it on the inside here first. Get my light ready, turn it upside down and shine, very delicate. I'm going to give another coat of resin on the outside just to make sure that nothing leaks. I can't afford to have any leakage at this point. Probably some of you at this point are like, no, you wouldn't. <laughs> Actually, as a matter of fact, I would. So with UV resin, I went ahead and glued the little tank right on top of the nail and decided to put some decoration all around. Here is the absolutely ridiculous tank on your nail. It is absolutely sturdy. You can shake it all you want, so you can watch the little critters move around. My only regret is not having put enough glitter in there. Would have been cool to put some stars. That way, a lot more things would have been shaking inside. As it is, the fish, for some reason, wants to stay in that corner, so I'm gonna have to shake it quite a bit eventually off camera, because it, it's defying me. What can I say? Which one of these is your nail, 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 nail style, please? Englishing. Are you more of a turtle on a beach? Or what about the koi pond in a field? Or the shaker oil charm? The other thing is I really wish I would have topped off the oil, but at some point doing things on camera gets a little a little more tricky. If you're wondering, this is what they look like when they're not zoomed in. So they don't really look that big in terms of design. You just have to really look pretty close and yeah, they're they're a little much. Eventually. So don't forget to let me know in the comment section below. I think for me, if I were to make more of these, it would definitely be between the turtle and the koi pond. This is a little much. It is really fun though. It is really fun. Phew, Japan background. Oh, Japan. Every time I get a chance to mention how much I love your snacks, I do it. And so luckily today, we are sponsored by Boksu. All right, back to my craft room. For those of you who don't know, Boksu is a monthly Japanese subscription box full of yummy snacks. But oh no no, not just any subscription box. They are one of the only Japanese snack box that partners up with hundred and plus year old companies, and we all know Japan has some pretty ancient companies, to make sure that you get some really amazing exclusives from Japan. Unlike some other Japanese subscription boxes that actually deliver from the US, these snacks are 100% authentic. Depending on the box size that you want, you can take the tasting, which is between 10 and 14 snacks, or the classic between 20 and 25 snacks. All subscriptions include free shipping to 40 different countries, including tracking. As someone who's traveled to Japan many times, about 10 times. I have to say that the snacks in this box are yes, authentic, but also many of them I've never tried before. I mean, just look at my reaction trying some of them. Oh my god, Aomori apple pie. I know their apples are legendary. Oh. Mmm. Oh. oh. Perfect, not too sweet, so flavorful. Citrusy seaweed snacks? Sure. Well, that's very lemony. Oh, this is my new favorite. Holy moly. It basically tastes like tempura with lemon on top. So whatever your fried item food is, think of that with lemon. That's so good. Mmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Seafood. I'm not a fan, but we'll try it anyways. It smells sweet. Oh, I would have never tried this on my own. This is good. And since Boxu really wants you to try a variety of things from Japan, your first box is going to be Seasons of Japan, which will contain snacks from a variety of different seasons for you to try out and enjoy. And then after that, themes change from month to month. One of the other things I really like, trust me, I really love this box. I, I love it so much, you box, I love you. And not just because I'm sponsored, I genuinely love this box. 
You don't just get snacks, but you have a cultural booklet, which has everything from the map, different regions, some phrases that you can learn. But one of the things I really appreciate, which is very rare, is that in their guide, they tell you what allergens are in what snacks, which means suddenly you wouldn't have to worry about sharing it with someone who might have an allergy. Bonus points for that. So what are you waiting for? Check the link in description box below as well as in the pinned comment for 10% off of your own authentic Japanese snack box using the code NERDYCRAFTER10, which can save you up to $44 off. And when you support sponsors, you also directly support this channel. Thank you to Boxu for sponsoring this video. If you want to watch the previous I'm um, Curious episode, make sure you check up here. And if you want to watch a video YouTube thinks is just right for you, Make sure you check down here. Until then, I will see you grains in the next video.